Welcome back. You're listening to WUSB Stony Brook. You just listened to Above Below's newest EP, The Sours of Discord. I am now joined by a couple of the band members. How about you guys introduce yourselves, tell us where you originate, and how the band formed pretty much a quick bio, I should say. <laughs> oh, hey. Well, I'm Jacob. I'm the vocalist. Well, we've been together as a band for quite a while, maybe like three years or so just slowly building stuff up and writing music. And then two years ago, maybe, I went to Isaac for a drummer, and I was like, let's do this. And then, yeah, slowly but surely, EP came together. Roughly in, like, in the last year, we've been, like, writing the EP, slowly building it after, like, already writing other material. So the EP is roughly, like, six months, so maybe a year old in itself. Yeah, so it's built So you started pretty much writing, like, almost a year beforehand. Kind of. Yeah. I've been writing it for like four years, maybe. Jeez. A long time ago, I started with the production of this whole EP, and it's just changed. It's just changed. grown for so long. Now we Did you do like anything in the band before you guys formed? Oh, um, yeah. We were all in We've been best friends for yeah. like, And we've all been best friends for yeah, six we've years. All, we've so. all just known each other for such a long time, so it's just like we just one day decided to join as a band. And oh, okay release music together, so. So, we'll start with some general questions now. The first question I got for you guys is, how did you decide your band name, Above Below? I think, funnily enough, it started as, like, we were naming files, like, AB123, just because it made, like, sense alphabetically, and it was easier to, like, organize songs, but then turning AB into, like, a word just, like, made sense, so... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. School was yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, and then we just stuck the comma in there. Yeah. Just put a comma in. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded cool. Yeah. It sounded cool. Yeah. It sounded pretty cool. And yeah. ABBLW is like our tag website thing. That's just cool as well. I don't yeah. know. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. You gotta be edgy somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys been working on a music video. You announced it on Facebook. Yeah. What's in the plans in the production for it? Is it going to be more playthrough type ish, or is it going to be more like story driven, symbolistic type deal? Well, we haven't really thought about the concept of the music video itself yet, but we've got some playthroughs in the works as well. And we're talking to a few filmmakers and stuff about the video. We'll be doing a few yeah. different things. We're doing quite, we're doing quite a lot of visual stuff. Like, we'll release playthroughs as a separate thing for like certain instruments, and then the music video will like probably have like both equal amounts of like us playing and then a story and then something to It'll go along with. Probably okay. story based as well, yeah. Might yeah. be elongated. Another question I got for you guys is you recently played a show around January sixth. I know it was the beginning of January, but this is I think is your first show playing with all the new material. So what was it like playing in front of an audience? It was Amazing. We've been rehearsing it all for so long, so it's really nice to play it in front of people who kind of maybe kind of know it. Yeah, like, yeah, we aware. played the show on the twenty seventh. A few people look like they knew. People, the yeah, song people know the song. It's just yeah. really cool to be like playing for people. Like after how long we worked on them and how much mm. effort we put in, it's yeah. just really cool. I think a lot of it's like really overwhelming in yeah, terms yeah. of the response that we've gotten. So it's, it's 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 kind of like it's funny to just sit back and see people actually know the words and get it. Song, but it's yeah, yeah, somewhat very surprising. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, 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 which is cool. All right, so we're going to be moving on to some fun type questions. The first one is if you could tour any part of the world, what part of the world would you pick? It could be any country. Oh, were we just saying Russia before? Russia, Russia. Russia. Yeah, yeah. Russia. yeah, we, yeah were, we were watching we were uh, Russia. video <laughs> of architects playing in Russia and it looked like the crowd is pretty wild. Really there. Crazy. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I feel like I think, you play up there, you'll we, freeze to death. I know, um... I, I love the cold. Oh, we're fine. We <laughs> love the cold. Yeah. I think That's Australians... Fine. I think it'll be kind of weird, you know, you guys being in Australia, going from about, like, 120 degree weather to, like, minus 20, minus 10 yeah. degree. Like, <laughs> it's 110 Fahrenheit today, right? Yeah, it's like 110 Fahrenheit. It's like four, almost 40 degrees here, like, 40 Celsius, Celsius roughly. It's pretty normal though. It sucks. That's like every day as well. <laughs> it's not fun. Well, alright, the next question I got for you guys if you had the chance to tour with any two bands, any decade, 
could be anyone, like with all the original members, whoever you like, who would it be? Uh, definitely would too with Slipknot and like the early 2000s era, mm. like when Paul was obviously still in the band and when they were more complete. Yeah, that'd be pretty insane. wild. Yeah, that'd be insane. Like, the right year. <laughs> Maybe Slipknot and Metallica as like a combo and like we support and we're like the third band. It's like, yeah, that'd be pretty mm. wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My final question for you guys for this section is were there any memorable concerts that you attended um, throughout your or childhood, kind of teenage years, or just recently? Unify 2017. Uh, Unify. Unify is pretty good. Heavy yeah. Music Gathering Festival. It's like a festival that we have here at like the, the bottom of uh, uh, Melbourne, Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like two-day camping festival. All our friends, all of our friends' bands were playing this year. It's just, it was just the most beautiful vibe. Everyone was, everyone there was just so friendly and beautiful, and it was just, I think that. One and of then memorable experiences. There's a show that me and Nick went to in 2011 with the Amity Affliction, Arsenal Alexandria, and Bring Me the Horizon. Oh, that's this a good like, lineup. This was like just as like, I think There Is a Hell came out, and yeah, then just after that, it yeah. was like in a maybe like 1,000 capacity room. Like tiny as heck room. Um, but yeah, that was just one of the craziest shows I think we've ever seen. People went, oh yeah, no, that was probably one of the best shows I've been to. Biggest, yeah. like, wall of deaths. Alright, so let's go into death with the newest EP. Uh, I somehow stumbled upon it online. I, I don't even know how. Um, I just heard the first single. I was like, oh, this is really good. This reminds me a lot of Architects, you know, like that um whole genre of metal i was like okay this is cool then i saw that you guys released the ep i was like okay it's like they intrigued me with single so let me you know take a full listen to this whole project by you guys and i was just blown away because especially like, going on the website and just looking all the lyrics i'll discuss that a little bit later but it was just like way more than i expected you know that was the idea, yeah. That was the idea, yeah. Let's just begin. Why, why did you guys name the title The Sours of Discord? So, our lyricist, Zach, isn't actually here, but it's all based off Dante's Inferno, like roughly based off Dante's Inferno, and the, the Sours of Discord, this is actually pronounced yeah, Sours. The Sours. Sours. <laughs> the Sours of just to correct you know. quote from... It, and it roughly translates to the bringers of this discord, which is like problems, like the problem yeah, bringers. like the hard bringers. Kind of, yeah, yeah. It's like the bringers of change, bringers of destruction. Mm. Bringers of, and that's, so that's what that means. And oh, okay. It's not that related to the lyrical concept, but it we're kind bringing of, destruction. It kind of forms like the overarching theme we're bringing it up to yeah. the story. The story... <laughs> so when did you guys decide it's like hey let's just do this whole conceptual release as our you know first project as a band well when i started all of when i started the writing process it was always my idea to have this concept of a band who kind of transcends and then i went to high school with that and then i don't know we were kind of talking and he was like this is a big cool this is a big cool and i was like you should just join the band man and then he started like expanding on the story and writing lyrics and writing some genuinely amazing stuff. I was like, bro, let's just do this. So and fun yeah, it's funnily enough, it, it makes like almost zero sense that our vocalist writes the majority of yeah. all the music and our guitarist writes the majority of all the lyrics. Oh, okay. So you guys pretty much, uh, for what I heard so far, just did it piece by piece. It wasn't more just jam out and figure out what works and what doesn't. Well, I think like a lot of it was written before we ever even like got the chance to play. Yeah, I pretty much <laughs> just I, I just guitar proed everything. Like I just had so many song ideas, and then I don't know, I just composed music, and it kind of just came together song by song. And then the, it, me, um, Zach would write the lyrics as we go, and then it just came together. He he wrote it all like with the story in mind, and it just came together in a big like piece by piece, song by song, second by second, and then. And once we started like playing together, it gave it like its own yeah, and flavor. Yeah, we played together. We realized how okay. we played. Play. Yeah, and then developed that way. And the sound really comes from the, the sounds. Yeah, very personable. I was going to ask a whole bunch of like 
lyrical questions, but it's going to be kind of hard because Zach's, I guess, not here. Uh, uh, uh. I've got a pretty solid understanding of We've got some Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, couldn't go in as much depth as Zach. <laughs> yeah. I just picked out lines that intrigued me. But first, I am a creation, the architect of perfect design. I am the highest form of omnipotence. I am divine. Was that any kind of relation to Descartes or no, any of those like philosophers type of deal that you make up? Like whatever exists is just what you know kind of deal. Yeah, that's what that he so that's in Blood Complex in the last song, which is the stage where the character of the protagonist, you could say, has transcended and has completely evacuated his form and become it, it, it's become one of become one. Become one with the life. It is he's I don't want to say he's a god, but that's alluded to, but there's no religious connotations at all. Oh okay. <laughs> so he's become everything. It's he's more just like a it's, I, it's like an ideology. It's an ideology. Yes. It's all an right. ideology. The other line that kind of stood out to me, it goes, They are paradise, I am paradise, we are paradise, and now I am whole again. So, at, during paradise is when he has entered the god machine, quoted in Inferno, and then become understanding of what needs to be done. It's like the moment you see the light, like light the way, you've done the mm. that song, but if you see the light and you realize oh, this is my divine purpose, this is my being, I am whole again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I guess it's hard to kind of pick certain phrases yeah. out because they all just like they, they all snap it's really hard for it it's just like yeah. I went through it was just one. like yeah. there's so much I can ask but like I know you guys are coming out with a lyrical explanation video in the yeah, future actually, yeah so yeah. that's something we're producing at the moment that's great it should be soon coming up that if Zach was here he could also go into more <laughs> depth that's yeah. Um, yeah it'll feature every song and uh, so that should that should uh, go through everything. Yeah, clear, cover clear everything. up any any uh, mystery that. How long did you guys spend in the studio actually recording all the material? So we spent a, a, a two weeks. Was it? We spent two weeks in, or two weeks and two days in the studio physically recording, and we tracked all the drums and all the vocals and some bass and the rest of the production and stuff like that. And the guitar tracking was done in my studio and in Luke's studio here. And I actually got super sick in the middle of recording. It's after so long. Yeah, the EP was actually recorded with like yeah. sick vocals. I was, yeah. I was like, literally almost. Sick. I dying. sounded like so, not so different, but very different. But it was a lot different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so, some did, I guess certain parts did that actually play into a positive thing with those sick vocals. Uh, <laughs> potentially. Perhaps. Potentially. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, I guess. I guess we're always going to see it as, like, imperfection. I'm always going to see it as an impression, so. but more room for improvement, I guess. For the listeners that kind of slightly understand the story, could you guys give kind of a track-by-track track kind of how the story goes? Yeah, I can do that. So, Ephemeral, track one, uh, it's the, about the man who has realized that there is corruption in the world, and this corruption within himself, and his being, and his habits, and his day-to-day -day routine. So he seeks a higher form of belief, not so much, he's not religious, he doesn't want it to be a god, because like, there must be an alternative to this existence that even people that live above people. And then purgatory enters, and then he starts to communicate with the, the others, he calls them, we haven't quoted that anywhere, but then the others. Starts to communicate with them, and then Inferno comes in and he begins his transition as he communicates with them through Purgatory. At the end of Purgatory, they, the devils, who are both the begin to communicate with him. And like, he's like, Show me the light and let me indulge in the light. It's him being like, This is I want to be part of this. And then in Inferno, he enters the God Machine and becomes, enters the process. Like, he, he, like and that's when the Dante references enter, and it's descending through the surface of hell, hence being purgatory and burning on paradise. So that's sort of where the references are there. And then in paradise, I am holding them, it's like this is my, my purpose. And then in perpetuum is caught in this one perpetual state of apathy, like he's just reminiscing. Oh, okay. And then think about the life that he had and like is able to see past, the present and the future 
for his being and the old the possibilities for the human race. And then in God complex, he becomes the God. He's like, I am divine. It's when it becomes like one. He's physically, he's completed the transformation to become one of the others. It is no more. Become so long so a physical being and becomes. Completes his mission. Yeah, whatever that <laughs> is. Completes his mission. Does whatever it is. Whatever it is, yeah. interpret it. Yeah. And like, it means something to everyone else. Like, if you receive it as a religious meaning, then that's not necessarily a bad thing. We do get asked yeah. a lot. We get asked a lot. It's religious. Black. Oh, okay. Actually, not, yeah, I would expect so. <laughs> Which is, it's just, I think it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, people just aren't intended. It's just, people yeah, can interpret it. Just it's just, it's just, just a story. Absolutely. However, people want to resonate with their music is up to them. That's, yeah. that's just, just people it's always a positive thing for us. So, for yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit rough, but yeah. Lots of times, I uh, just looking at news or, you know, Twitter, Facebook, just social media, sometimes artists put out there that making a conceptual release kind of makes it weird to f- per- to perform by the artist because it's kind of hard to relate to that music. Do you guys feel that way? Like, just like very little? Do you have any well, feelings toward that? The music itself wasn't necessarily written to follow the concept. The concept was almost purely lyrical. Yeah. So the music itself yeah. is quite relatable. Like, it's structured, there's sort of oh. choruses, like breakdowns or stuff like that. So... It's not a conceptual sounding thing, so it doesn't sound too jarring. But it's like that the lyrics are just there. So the lyrics are just there, and to like resonate with the artwork and just have the like depth is to be of substance. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's how I feel about it. So, what are your guys' favorite songs on the release? In Perpetuum is my favorite song. Yeah, that song's pretty good. <laughs> um, Ephemeral or God Complex are probably my favorite. God Complex, yeah. Yeah. Diamond, as well. yeah. Uh, is there uh, is there anything you guys want to experiment with sound wise in the future release? Yeah, hell yeah! I'm, There's a I've lot. Been writing things and new stuff. We got some new stuff underway. It's getting really like we want to like increase the ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Whether it be yeah. heavier, heavier and lighter. Or well, it's very melody and pretty. I'm gonna what, a lot more. Are you guys going to stick with that conceptual idea throughout your like? Newer no, releases. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not gonna be. It's more gonna. Be, it's gonna be far more relatable and real. It's not gonna be like fantastical, I guess. Obviously, it's just much. like with the Sowers of Discord being our first release, it's just kind of like slightly difficult to have an entry point that is personable because not everyone just wants to hear like another band that's just gonna yeah. sing about like I hate the world <laughs> or something else, whatever else. else. Yeah. So we thought that by attaching a story that like actually has uh, like somewhat historical value to it, that being Dante's Inferno, we thought it would be a bit more of a draw card in itself than itself. With the whole artwork and the website and the poetic form and everything like that, it just kind of adds yeah, a bit more substance to the music and who we are as a band. So how did you guys pick that album art for this EP to represent the whole project? Well... Um, we went to Pat Fox, who's just the most amazing artist, and we had the idea of a man, like, transforming between something. So, and we had the idea of a person, like, falling through the water, and we went to Pat Fox, and I was like, listen, dude, this is our idea, and he just painted by hand this, <laughs> this, and it's just amazing, yeah, he, and we just love it. He hand-painted it. He hand-painted it, and we just love the mountains in the background and stuff like that, and just the cold stuff, and his, like, appearance kind of, like, ragged, kind of, like, kind of in a way, it just adds to the ambiguity of it. Yeah, he falls through water and then falls through water. So, what... The moment of transcendence, I guess. Oh, okay. What are some future plans for you guys next year or so? Um, just lots of shows. Lots of shows. We've got playthroughs coming out and music video and explanation coming out and just lots of shows. Hopefully to our end of the year. But, who knows? We just want to play shows. Mm. We just want to play shows. <laughs> If if people if people in the US want to bring us over, bring us over, <laughs> we'll get an event. Just start a we'll Kickstarter, like, see what <laughs> happens. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll come over and definitely play. Hundred percent. So where can people find your music online? So if they want to keep up to date. Yeah, if, you, um, if you, I don't know if you, I don't know if it works if you Google it, but if you search, if you go to abbblw.com. Um, that's like our main website that has a link to has a link to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, there's links to the iTunes store. There's links to our Bandcamp. 
Yeah. Um, you can stream us on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon, the Google Play Tidal. Store. Everything. Um, Tidal. Yeah, Tidal. yeah, we're on Tidal, JC. <laughs> Jay-Z personally messaged us and was like, yo, we really like your band. Yeah, I'm going to put you on title. So we're on title as well. Um, but yeah, everywhere. If you search Buffalo or the Souls of Discord, I think we tried to hashtag almost everything with ABBBLW. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the abbreviation for now, I guess. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on air, talking a bit about the EP. Um, too thank bad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, too bad we couldn't get everyone in the room. <laughs> but we, we still got a lot of answers. So um, good luck to you guys. Hopefully you'll break out sometime soon with the EP. Hopefully. 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 Um, maybe if in the U.S. you want to come do stuff in the studio. If you ever hit like New York, oh, heck free yeah, to come yeah, here. That'd be tight. That'd be tight. All right. Well... Listeners, make sure to check out Above Below on Facebook, Bandcamp, Spotify, all those things, and stay tuned for more music.